the Wari civilization was the first major culture in Peru that thrived in the coastal and highland regions of ancient Peru between approximately 450 and 1000 CE. Centered around their capital city of Wari, the Wari people effectively utilized the varied landscapes they controlled to establish an empire. This empire was managed through provincial capitals linked by an extensive network of roads. The Wari's administrative methods and artistic style later had a notable impact on the Inca civilization. During the same period, the Wari coexisted with other significant cultures of the Middle Horizon around 600 to 1000 CE, such as Tiwanaku and Pucara. In addition to their military prowess, the Wari were skilled agriculturalists who engineered canals to irrigate terraced fields. This economic stability and prosperity enabled them to employ a combination of military strength, economic advantages, and unique artistic expressions to establish an empire across ancient Peru. Their adept land management also helped them withstand a 30-year drought that led to the decline of neighboring civilizations like the Nazca and Mosh during the late 6th century CE. While undoubtedly influenced by contemporaneous cultures, the Wari appropriated symbols from these cultures, such as the Chavan Staff Deity. This deity was closely associated with crucial elements like the sun, rain, and maize, which were vital for societies reliant on agriculture in an unpredictable climate. The Wari transformed this deity into a ritual icon, incorporating it into textiles and pottery. By doing so, they spread their distinctive visual symbolism and left a significant legacy in Andean art. The capital city of Wari, situated about 25 kilometers north of modern Ayacucho, sits at an altitude of 2,800 meters and covers an area of 15 square kilometers. Its origins date back to around 250 CE, and during its peak, it might have housed a population of up to 70,000 people. Wari exhibits typical traits of Andean architecture, characterized by closely packed rectangular structures enclosed by walls, often subdivided into a labyrinth of compartments. The city's walls are imposing, reaching heights of up to 10 meters and thicknesses of around 4 meters. These walls are primarily constructed using unworked stones held together with a mud mortar. The buildings within the city generally feature two to three stories, with courtyards lined by stone benches integrated into the walls. Drainage systems were also stone-lined. The interiors of buildings were commonly plastered and painted white. In Wari architecture, there's minimal differentiation between public and private structures, and town planning seems to have been lacking. Nonetheless, a royal palace has been identified in the northwest area of the city, referred to as Vigakayuk Moko. Additionally, a ruined temple existed in the Marajushiyuk complex in the city's southeast. Constructed during the 6th century CE, this temple featured subterranean components and was originally painted red. Like other structures in the city, it was intentionally destroyed and ritually buried. Around 800 CE, the city was seemingly abandoned for reasons that remain unclear. Archaeological excavations have uncovered tombs at Wari containing exquisite examples of Wari textiles, along with ceramic artifacts. Notably, a royal tomb was found in the Monyakayuk area, comprising 25 chambers on two levels, each adorned with finely cut stone slabs. Moreover, a shaft led to a third-level chamber shaped like a llama, while a circular chamber was carved out at a fourth level below. The llama-shaped tomb, although looted in antiquity, served as the resting place of Wari royalty and dates back to 750 to 800 CE. Wari was once encompassed by irrigated fields, and fresh water flowed through the city via underground conduits. Signs of prosperity are evident through dedicated zones for producing specific items such as ceramics and jewelry. The presence of precious materials and imported goods like shells from the coast and spondylus from Ecuador suggests trade connections with distant regions. Storage structures found in Wari and other Wari cities further point to a centralized trade network that spanned across ancient Peru. Another noteworthy center of the Wari civilization was Paikalacta, situated southeast of Wari and established around 650 CE. Found at an altitude of 3,250 meters, this site served as a hub for administrative and military activities. The heart of Paikalacta is a rectangular area measuring 745 by 630 meters, featuring a meticulously organized geometric arrangement of squares. Despite this ordered layout, 
The internal designs of individual compounds exhibit unique variations, similar to other WARI sites. Entry to Pycolacta was meticulously controlled through a single, winding entrance. Among the remarkable discoveries at Pycolacta are 40 miniature Greenstone figures portraying elite members of society. Additionally, small figurines, some no larger than 5 cm, depict transformational shamans, warriors, captives in bondage, and pumas, crafted from materials such as copper, gold, and semi-precious stones. The site's abandonment occurred around 850 to 900 CE, and evidence indicates that certain buildings were destroyed by fire, with doorways deliberately sealed. Several other significant Wari cities included Viracocapampa, Jinkamoko, Konkopata, Marka Wamachuko, and Azangaro. Alongside these urban centers, there were dedicated military sites, like the fortress at Cerro Bal, situated near Tiwanaku territory to the south. These sites were intricately linked by a network of roads, ensuring connectivity between water sources and various locations within the Wari civilization. Wari art finds its most compelling expression in the textiles discovered, often showcasing motifs like the staff deity, plants, the San Pedro cactus flower, pumas, condors, and notably llamas. These textiles were interred alongside the deceased and have been remarkably preserved in the arid desert environment. They exhibited a vibrant array of colors, with a particular affinity for blue shades. Their designs predominantly featured rectilinear geometric shapes, especially the stepped diamond pattern. Interestingly, weavers occasionally incorporated single, spontaneous motifs or color shifts, often in green or indigo, into their creations. These could be considered as personal signatures or a reminder that deviations from rules were acceptable. Over time, Wari designs evolved into such abstract forms that figures became nearly unrecognizable. This transformation could have been an intentional effort by the elite to control their interpretation. The almost unrecognizable abstract figures might also symbolize the shamanic transformation and the altered states of consciousness induced by hallucinogenic substances during Wari religious rituals. In terms of pottery, the Wari were drawn to various forms, including double-spouted vessels, which were prevalent in other Andean cultures, as well as large urns, beakers, bowls, and molded effigy figures. These pottery designs were significantly influenced by the patterns found in Wari textiles, notably, the staff deity and warriors armed with dart throwers, shields, and military attire frequently adorned beakers, known as keras. Elite members of the Wari society also displayed their wealth through precious metals. Remarkable artifacts, like those found in a royal tomb at Espiritu Pampa, included a silver face mask and breastplate, gold bracelets, and jewelry made from semi-precious stones such as greenstone and lapis lazuli. Human figures, dressed in the typical Wari style of a sleeveless tunic and four-cornered hat, were also crafted from hammered precious metals, showcasing the society's skilled metallurgy. While the specific reasons for the decline of the Wari civilization remain uncertain, various theories propose causes such as the empire's overextension or another extended period of drought during the 9th century CE. Regardless of the precise factors, the region witnessed the dissolution of the Wari Empire and the emergence of fragmented political entities over several centuries. Perhaps the most enduring contribution of the Wari civilization lies in its distinctive artistic style, which not only influenced their contemporary society, the Mosh, but also left an indelible mark on subsequent civilizations like the Lambayake and, notably, the Inca. Many of the intricate roadways constructed by the Wari were later integrated into the expansive road network of the Incas. Similarly, the agricultural terraces established by the Wari were repurposed by the Incas for their own agricultural practices. However, the capital city of Wari fell victim to looting in both ancient times and during the Spanish conquest of the 16th century CE. Rediscovered in the mid-20th century CE, Initial archaeological excavations began in the 1940s and have persisted to this day. These ongoing excavations gradually unveil the once hidden wealth and authority that characterized one of the most significant ancient Andean civilizations.